welcome to Select Arcane! It is really that time of year once again. It's Namopemo, National Model Painting Month. In translation, it's a Model Horse International Painting Party. This is my eighth year participating and I am just excited about this year as I have been for all my other years. Have I piqued your interest but you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, let me start from the beginning. Namopemo is an international event where you paint a model horse in the month of February. It could be any size, any scale, any brand, it really doesn't matter so long as it's a 3D equine object. Paint your equine from start to finish, and there are really only two rules. Number one, have fun. Number two, learn from your endeavors. What started as a fun little event from the Bramier blog blossomed into one of the hobby's most prominent highlights. There are hundreds of art tutorials, all open source from prominent artists around the hobby, giving suggestions on how to prep, how to paint, how to do certain colors, certain designs. It's all there and all free. You can ask questions in the Mamopamo Facebook page. Everyone is there to help and happy to do so. I'll be posting all the links in the description box below so you can poke around for yourself. Anyways, let's get recapping. My first Namo Pemo in 2017, I painted tomato soup exclusively in oils. He was my first briar custom ever, and traditional scale. In 2018, I took on my first micro, a portrait of my old mare Knickers. She was done exclusively in oils as well. In 2019, I took on my first resin, a portrait of my old horse Taiga. I did her exclusively in earth pigments. In 2020, I took on my first Appaloosa, Another micro, but this time in mixed media, specifically earth pigments, oils, and acrylics. His name was Takoyaki. In 2021, during the pandemic, I had time for a much larger horse. A bantam scale Icelandic named Stormvik that I also did again in mixed media. In 2021, I snuck back to micros and painted Fuji. 100% in oils, but this time with a custom base. And then last year in 2023 was a massive failure where I took on Pumpkin, aka Dapple Pie, where I would try to do her in oils, but didn't quite make it. You can see that video here. Phew, that's seven horses done in the last seven years, not counting all those extra horses that I did in between. Do you think I improved any? I certainly hope so. So what's on the agenda for this year? What is going to be so different and spectacular that I'm going to do that I haven't done before? Well, first, let me ask you this. Is Sailor Moon still relevant? Because this is something I grew up with and that show is way older than I am. But when I was growing up and I was a kid, it was the next best thing. I ask because the entire theme and color scheme of this horse is going to be based on Silver Millennium, aka the Moon Kingdom where Sailor Moon is originally from. When I was little, I was so enchanted by how sparkly and pretty the kingdom was, all the blues, purples, and pinks, and the reflection from the moon on the pools, and the weird coincidence that it was the Taj Mahal on the moon. In 2021, sometime in the summer after I painted Stormvik, I painted this Kylie Parks medallion. I did him exclusively in acrylics, and I just wanted to have some fun. He didn't take very long, but he ended up being one of my most favorite medallions I've ever done. I don't know why, but he really just reminded me of the colors of the Moon Kingdom that he was based off of. I sealed him in Mr. Super Clear, and he actually started to crack after a period of time, so unfortunately he's going to have to be restored. But I didn't forget about him, and I've always thought about maybe doing a model just like him. Enter Squirrel, a Maggie Bennett Micro. I'm going to completely repaint Silver Millennium onto this model. And with my extremely busy school schedule and the fact that I have residency period in February means that I won't have a lot of time. So forget about oils and forget about mixed media. Those take way too long. Acrylics it is. My worst enemy. I say this every Namo Pamo video, but veterans know we start prepping in January. But in this case, I start prepping over the Christmas holidays because school gets in the way. I got these diamond coated files off of Amazon and they are the best thing ever for prepping micros, especially pewter ones. I look for any seams or unevenness that's not actually supposed to be part of the model. The chest, the front of the legs, the hindquarter area, the flanks, and the face all get sanded with these files. They can be pretty tricky to see, 
but just use some good lighting and take it slow. Maggie's later releases are so clean and it's pretty hard to spot any flaws on your first pass. Eventually you'll start noticing some little silver shards on your fingers and you'll see everything kind of blend onto the model and that means it's time for a bath. Taking Squirrel over to my sink, I wash him in anti-grease dish soap. This gets any oil off your fingers from the model. It's really important because any paint that you put on your model will start to flake off or be affected by the oils. After the soap, I use some baking soda and water and gently scrub the pewter. This is kind of like a very, very, very fine grit sandpaper and it very gently takes away any flaws. But don't use this technique on resins because it'll actually scratch the plastic. After maybe one more soap bath, I leave them on a paper towel to dry overnight. I'm using white Duplicolor Sandable Primer to prime Squirrel. It's minus 11 Celsius, also known as 12 Fahrenheit, so it's really cold outside and it's also really windy. Duplicolor is really forgiving with my weather conditions, so that's why I really like using it. So long as I let him dry inside, it'll be just fine. He stays on my drying rack, which is actually just a cupboard above my desk, and right beside that is my overhead fan, so I keep that on while he dries so there's no fumes. A few days after priming Squirrel, I go over with my diamond coated file again. The whole point of this layer of primer is to actually see the imperfections on the model that I couldn't see originally. So now I can see more seams, more holes, and things that I need to fix, as well as some small hairs that seem to have gotten trapped on his coat. So I'll have to clean out my drying rack and fix that. After I finish sanding Squirrel, he dries overnight once again, and I give him another coat of primer. And that's it. All I need to do now is sign up for official Namo Pemo and wait until February 1st. Namo Pemo began and I went running in the opposite direction. I got whisked off to my master's residency about four hours away. That took a whole 12 days off the Namo Pemo calendar. And on top of that, Sonia was born while I was away. So I played a lot of catch up when I got home. And that meant I hadn't touched Squirrel since the end of January. But on February 19th, I was finally able to get started. It was a Canadian holiday known as Family Day, so I actually had some time. Here's how I set up my station for acrylics. I folded up some tin foil to make a palette, folded some paper towel, got a cup of water, and brought out all the paints I'm going to use. This time I'm using a mixture of Liquitex and Golden Brands. I like the tin foil palette because it's disposable and I find that I ruin my palettes whenever I use acrylics. What I'm doing is preparing his base coat. I'm using two drops of titanium white and one drop of titanium buff, so two to one ratio. This is going to give me a really consistent white paint, just like any horse marking. I add drops of water until the paint is the consistency of milk. I see it as 2% milk, or I suppose it's called reduced fat milk in the US. Basically, if the paint is beating up on your palette, you have too much water, and if it's really thick and leaving a streak, you added too much paint. I go through all the details in my rerun video right here. Squirrel is such a tiny model that I have to paint in very thin layers so I don't lose any details. Being primed white already means that I don't have to add too many layers of paint. As the paint gets applied to your model, if it looks streaky, you just have a little bit too much paint and not enough water. You can very lightly sand out these areas with a bit of sanding sponge if you think it's too thick. I did three layers of the white base coat. And because I'm using acrylics, everything dries right away, so I was able to do all of it in one sitting. Even though Squirrel's going to be a decorator, I don't want his coat to be flat, so I'm adding a bit of dimension with pinking. The exact color mixture again is in my rerun video, but I'm adding a little bit of yellow, red, to a lot of white. This creates a nice peachy pink that goes on the muzzle and flank area. Again, I bring the paint down to the consistency of 2% milk or low fat milk and delicately add the pinking. If you find that your pink is too pink, then you can add a bit of tightened buff or a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of burnt umber. After the pinking is done, I go over one more time with a layer of the white base coat. This brings the tone down and makes it look a bit more natural. I would actually be pretty happy with this color if he was going to be a dominant white, but too bad he's not. Now, here's where you're going to trust the process. Acrylics can start off so streaky and ugly, 
and it makes you look like the worst artist ever, but you know, it comes around eventually, so just be patient. I'm using these Liquitex soft body acrylics that are a little thicker than the golden brands I was just using. I add a little bit more water to these to get their consistency right. Following the Silver Millennium Medallion as reference, I start off with the pink over the muzzle. I'm very carefully dotting on the spots and moving up into the purples. Right now I'm just blocking out where I need the spots, I'm not going into any crazy details. And it looks so bad, oh my gosh I have so many regrets at this point. The thoughts going through my mind are like, why didn't you just keep him dominant white? Why did he have to be a decorator? Why did you have to do an Appaloosa for Namo Pemo? You've done an Appaloosa before, it sucked. But no, no, Namo Pemo's for learning and I need to get over this. After the violet, I move into the teal color and going from there, I need to improvise because the medallion only goes down to halfway through the shoulder. I decide to just double back on the same color scheme just to keep him nice and fluid. He's so tiny and I have to continuously squint over my glasses to be able to see clearly so I am so sorry for all these terrible angles. If you can't see him, that makes two of us. Once all the spots are dry, I'm going over them again in the same colors. Remember I did three coats of the base and then the pinking and then another base coat over top? Yeah, we're going to be doing that basically with the spots minus the base coat on top. Nice thin layers equal nice smooth finish. By the time he's done, you won't even notice that there's multiple layers of paint on the spots alone. By the way, these brushes that I'm using are nail art brushes that I got off of Amazon. I love them for micros and they're so good for acrylics. On layer two, I'm introducing the gradation of the colors. I want a seamless transition between the pink to the purple, the purple to the teal, the teal to the purple, etc. I start by cutting the spots in half, so in the purple to teal side, the right side is purple, the left side is teal. This gives me a roadmap of where I want the colors to split. And it looks pretty whack at the beginning, but trust me, it's going to be this pretty ombre. Of course I map out the other colors as well, like the pink to the purple. Once it's done, I mix up the in-between colors, so I'm actually mixing up the teal and purple mixture, the pink and purple mixture, etc. For spots smack in the middle of the transition, they get painted in that exact color. It just gives an illusion that you have a gradient without actually having a gradient. And he's so small that you can hide all these little details without doing a lot of work. For the main tail and feathers, I'm using the exact same base coat, white and tighten buff, but mixing the tiniest, tiniest bit of magenta into it to create this really streaky pink. That's exactly what I did for the medallion, so I'm copying it here. I just wanted it to be subtle and not too much because I wanted the spots to pop. As I'm working on the mane and tail, I'm starting to notice that a little bit of the acrylic is starting to peel up because I'm handling him too much. I find this normal when working with acrylics, I'm not sure about any other acrylic artists out there, but the way to remedy this for me is just to seal him. So I'm using Tester's Dull Coat and I take him out to spray. I just give him a good coating, wait 20 minutes, and then carry on painting. Because acrylics are pretty durable, you really don't need to use any gesso or primer over top of those areas that have some holes. The primer really just acts as extra grip, but it's not really necessary. Please note that if you were using oils or any other medium, you would absolutely have to reprime. I'm going over all of the spots again. With the layer of sealant in between, it kind of gives this three-dimensional look to it. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but in person it looks so much better after you seal it and paint over it again. I'm really focusing on the gradation areas where I'm blending in the two colors together. At this point he's kind of out of his ugly stage so you can kind of see the potential now. I think at this point some of the spots have between four or five layers. Tired of painting spots, I move on to his hooves. I'm actually using a solid in-between color. I used teal and purple mixture for his hooves. They might look a little bit flat now, but that's okay because I'm going to be adding glitter later on. I also dot on his teeny tiny little eyes. I'm using straight up teal for them. For his pupil, I'm actually using ultramarine blue. At this small, they look black, but they'll add a little bit of lifelike shine and I dot the tiniest eye white I can in white. 
Next, I add Liquitex Gloss Varnish to the pan. I'm going to be using this Micro Pearl Pearl X, as well as Interference Blue. I mix those two powders into the Liquitex Gloss Varnish and create a really pretty sparkly paint. This is what I go over the hooves in. The gloss varnish is semi-translucent with the glitters. The acrylic base coat really shines through and creates this nice periwinkle blue. Taking a dry brush, I also apply the glitters directly to his coat. I just pick up the powder with the brush and dust it lightly over top. And once I'm happy with how sparkly he is, I take him out to spray one more time in Tester's dull coat all over. Don't worry, the powders shine right through and so do his hooves. And then the final touch is adding Liquitex Gloss Varnish to his eyes, nostrils, and a little bit of his mouth. And he's done! Silver Millennium was finished within a day, which is definitely my new record for Namo Paymo completion. If I had more time, I know I could have done better and done a lot more detail in his face to capture the medallion spirit. But all in all, I'm pleased with him. Acrylics to me are the hardest medium to learn, and I'm glad I tried it this time. What do you think of Silver Millennium? Do you think he could be part of the Sailor Guardians? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can find me on Instagram at SelectArcane or on Facebook by the same name. Thanks for watching. Bye.